So let's talk briefly about the step response of our mass spring damper system. We've said before that we've got a transfer function x of s over f of s, and if we apply Newton's second law and draw a free body diagram, we end up with this form, which we can also then write as this, which I've since I think shown that is equal to this. So that's rolling off my paper a little bit based on the definition that zeta is equal to b over b critical. b critical is 2km square root and omega n is equal to the square root of k over m. We then also showed that that same expression could be written as 1 over m s plus a squared plus omega squared where a is equal to zeta omega n and omega is equal to omega d is equal to omega n 1 minus zeta squared square root. So if we have a step response, we're talking about f of s equal to 1 over s, or possibly some amplitude a over s. x of s is g of s f of s. So that would be 1 over m s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared times the quantity 1 over s. So the question is, how do we partial fraction expansion, what is the correct form of the partial fraction expansion of that? So I'm saying that if x of s is 1 over m s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared times 1 over s, that we're going to write that as, uh, let's say, c1 over s plus c2 uh, I guess I'll just say a for now, plus, I'm oh, sorry, omega for now, um, plus c3 s plus a over s plus a squared plus omega squared. But if this is going to be true, this expression has to equal this expression. And so if we work out the math just as before, a is equal to zeta omega n and omega is equal to omega d is equal to omega n 1 minus zeta squared square root. So if those things are true and this, so I can plug in zeta omega n here, I can plug in omega d here, zeta omega n here, omega d here, and this will equal that. So I can multiply through by either of those and they're the same. So when I go to do my partial fraction expansion, I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to say that I've got x of s, and I'm going to rewrite this just to make this slightly more clear, as 1 over m s plus zeta omega n squared plus omega d squared times 1 over s is equal to C1S plus C2 omega D plus C3S plus zeta omega N divided by S plus zeta omega N squared plus omega D squared. So I'm going to multiply through by S times this other denominator. And when I do that, this S will cancel and this would cancel with this. And so what I get is that one over m is equal to c1. So the s canceled with, so I have this in my numerator. I don't really have a piece of paper big enough to do that. Um, but that s would cancel with that. And so c1 would end up multiplying s plus zeta omega n squared plus omega d squared. And then c2 omega d plus C3 S plus zeta omega n. This would cancel with that, but I would still have an S. 
And so if I multiply these things out, I get that one over m is equal to c1. So this would be s squared plus two zeta omega n s plus omega n squared. And there'd be a c1 times each of those plus omega d squared. And then this would be C2 omega D S plus C3 S plus C3 zeta omega N. Um, whoops, that's an S squared. And there's an S there as well. And so if I wanted to multiply that out further, I would get a C1 S squared plus C1 times 2 zeta omega N s plus c1 omega n squared whoops i screwed that up too this parenthesis was over here so it's an omega n plus omega d squared on the s to the zero term plus c2 omega d s plus c3 s squared plus c3 zeta omega n s so first move is to say that for my s to the second equation, I have zero is equal to c1 s squared plus c3 s squared, which tells me that c3 is equal to a negative c1. Well, c1 is gonna turn out to be our steady state value, and c3 is what multiplies the cosine. So c3 equal to negative c1 is actually what's necessary to guarantee that x to the zero is or x of zero is equal to zero. So this is actually falls out of our initial conditions. That might not be obvious from the math, but it's true. And then I've got this s to the first term. I've got this s to the first term. I've got this s to the first term. And then I've got that s to the zero term. Um, no, we start with the s to the first term, even though it might not get it. Well, we'll see what happens. So we get a c1, 2, zeta, omega, n, s, plus c2, omega, d, s, plus c3, zeta, omega, n, s. But we know that c3 is a negative c1. And so this, zeta, omega, n, s, is going to subtract off one of these. So if I've got 2 times c1 minus c1 times zeta omega n, then all of that is equal to 0. So I've got c1 times zeta omega n, and an s drops out of everything, plus c2 omega d is equal to 0. Well then, if I subtract some stuff across and divide across, c2 is a negative c1 zeta omega n divided by omega d which is enough to be a valid answer, but remember that omega d is actually omega n one minus zeta squared square root. So if I plug that back in, the omega n's, will, I'll, I'll just I'll write it out for a second, z one zeta omega n divided by omega n one minus zeta squared square root. And so the omega n's cancel, and c two will equal a negative c one times zeta over one minus zeta squared. So we're almost there. Um, we have C2 and C3 in terms of C1. And now we just have the C1 equation that come out of S to the zero. So S to the zero tells me that one over M is equal to C1 omega n squared plus omega d squared. Well, again, remember that omega d is equal to omega n one minus zeta squared square root. So omega d squared would be omega n squared times one minus zeta squared, which is not quite where I was expecting that to go. That's a positive, that's a positive. I somehow was expecting that to cancel better than it does. Okay. Um, so 1 over m, c1, and that's going to be 2 omega n squared minus 
zeta squared omega n squared. So I can't, ultimately C1 needs to end up being one over K, I would think, and that is a little bit not obvious to me at this point. I can pull out an omega n squared, and omega, well, I'll do that as an, I'll not skip that step. Omega n squared times 2 minus zeta squared. And then omega n squared is k over m times 2 minus zeta squared, 1 over m. Which would almost work with my intuition. Um, if this term was simply equal to unity, we would have C1 is equal to 1 over K. Well, let me think about that and come back in a minute. So I'm back and I found my mistake. It is right here. What's happening is that I'm squaring this term. And so I get an S squared, a 2 zeta omega and S. But this term is supposed to be kind of A squared plus B squared. This should be B squared, which means it should have a zeta squared times omega n squared. So everywhere we see that term, it's not just omega n, it is zeta squared omega n. And so What's the next row? So then we come down here to the s to the 0 equation. That is not you. It was on another piece of paper. Sorry. Um, it was this. But we're going to change this. I guess we're just going to... I don't know. I guess I'll just keep erasing and redoing it instead of rewriting the whole thing. But it would probably be faster. So there's that. And then the key is that that's the definition of omega d. So this is the definition of omega n squared. So now, now I will just erase all of this ridiculousness. So we're going to have c1 times zeta squared omega n squared plus omega d squared, which is omega n squared minus omega n squared times zeta squared. So part of what I was getting at is that this term and this term now cancel, and we end up with just c1 times omega n squared is equal to 1 over m. Well, omega n squared is just k over m, so c1 times k over m is equal to 1 over m. So if I multiply through by m, I get that 1 is equal to c1 times k. And then if I divide through by k, I get that c1 is equal to 1 over k, which intuitively makes sense, right? If we go back to the fact that we're talking about a mass spring damper system, when everything else dies out, f is equal to kx. And so that will be like our x steady state. That has to be true. So x steady state has to be f over k, um, assuming there is a, such a thing. So it doesn't make sense if there's a sinusoidal input. But because this is a step input, uh, sorry, that's supposed to be a k. We should end up at step amplitude a or 1 or whatever over k. So there's c1. We also had expressions for C2 and C3. And if we go back to our form, C2 is what multiplies the sine term, C3 is what multiplies the cosine term. And so if we were going to put it all together, we're saying that x of t is equal to 1 over k times 1 of t for a step response. And then minus uh, C3 was just a negative C1, so it's just minus 
e to the negative zeta omega n cosine omega d t and then also I should pull out the e to the minus the zeta x well let's do that so it's negative let's put it around there and then the sine term is zeta over 1 minus zeta squared square root times the sine of omega d t so that is the full solution to the unit step response of a mass spring damper system that is underdamped, uh, again, with our common definitions of omega d, zeta, and omega n. Um, yeah, and if you needed a different amplitude, you just multiply that amplitude out front here, like so. Make that an a instead of a 1 if you needed to. And like I said, omega n is root k over m. Uh, B critical is 2km. Zeta is B over B critical. Zeta is between 0 and 1. And omega d is omega n 1 minus zeta squared square root. Plug all of those things into there, and you have x as a function of time.